Hello you, I've been trying to teach you how to spiritually awaken for ages now, the only problem being that I myself am quite severely mentally ill and impeded in my own spiritual development, that slows things down somewhat, but the techniques themselves, the techniques that I'm using, the ones that I was taught to awaken myself from the um, fog of chemical dependency are applicable in ordinary life and allow me to demonstrate this now. I've got a resentment. I'm always getting resentments. I went to a Super Bowl party. When you're in America, you go to a Super Bowl party. I went to my friend's Super Bowl party house. Now, I don't feel like I would really go to a World Cup party, right? And I care about football. English football. Shouldn't need an adjective. Uh, like, I, I care about it. But I still normally, I watch things on my own anyway. I generally like to be on my own or, you know, with my wife and my kids. Anyway, like I went to this thing and it was actually perfectly nice. There's people there that I care about and there's people there that I like. But the football itself is such a gargantuan kick up the balls of a sport. So vivid and lurid. They do the car the players are demonstrated in animation now, you know, like the, uh, and the, when they strap them on the road. And so and so has made a 10 yard. Somebody did dab And like the person appears in animation, like they were cartoon little versions of themselves. Like, that's going to happen in the Prem next, isn't it? That'll happen in Premier League. Little cartoon Jamie Vardy's. <laughs> Little rodenty things. No offence to Jamie Vardy. He's having a party, apparently, later. Anyway, like, so it's so vivid and lurid and loud and massive and enormous. And, like, the adverts come on and they're sort of like... It's like beyond parody, actually, the adverts. For sort of, like, sugary, salty gas guzzling mind numbing things just sort of hitting you so hard like I don't know what to do it makes me I recognize that the NFL is the um, you know it's the national sport of America not basketball not baseball because the halftime show that carnival that's where it's at in American culture. That's where it's at. Not criticizing America. I love America. I'm criticizing America. I'm talking about, as you, I'm sure know, commodified, commercialized, late capitalist ideology as it hits you through broadcast media. And all these problems will be inherited in the UK anyway because it's all sort of, you know, the one thing that does trickle down in trickle down economics is the culture itself. So like, um, anyway, while I was there, like I was, there's some people that were kids, there's people that were dogs, I'm there with my kids. I never feel comfortable when I'm out with my kids. I can't do the job of being a parent while I'm out in society, or I can, but that's the only job I can do. I can't have no small talk, I can't do anything else. I've got to watch them two pair of bloody lunatics breaking everything, touching stuff. It's too much pressure. Anyway, this bloke comes to this baby. He's a person I know a bit, but not a lot. He, uh, during it, like, he, I noticed how he was touching his baby, it was very, like, sort of hands-on, and, and I was sort of like, because I have daughters, and I'm like, you know, I don't know if I'm, if it's particularly gendered. The way that he handled his little boy was very, sort of, like, full-on. It was only a little boy like that, little thing about that big, and he was handling it very full-on. I was like, bloody hell, mate, you're very rough. I'm not like that with my kids, all right? And he, um, he goes, oh, yeah, yeah, no, I like to touch him, I like to touch him and all this. And he was sort of moving his house around. He goes, like, because in the morning when he gets in my bed, he comes in and touches me. And then the guy touched my face, right? Now, I've got a normal policy of if someone does something to me, I do it back to them. Because just to test what they were doing. But for some reason, when he was there with his baby and everything, and when I was at this Super Bowl party, I just sort of, like, he... he to be fair, he did say sorry. He went, oh, sorry, sorry, that. But by then, I've experienced such a surge of rage. And, um, well, actually, it's not rage. It's numbness I experience, a kind of numbness that's later replaced by rage. The rage is normally, I feel like I should have done something. Of course you shouldn't do something. You don't have fights at people's Super Bowl parties with children and dogs. That's not life, is it? It's not life if you're like... Look at me, I'm not, that's, I've got blankets on. I'm wearing a kimono and a blanket. And go to Super Bowl parties and have fights. Anyway, this technique, that's, that's a resentment. I've got a resentment against that person. Something that I cannot control. Something that's outside of me has caused me to feel emotionally disrupted. The technique I was taught teaches that if something happens to you that disturbs you, something is at fault with you also. Now, this is not a system of self-condemnation and, neg and negativity all to self. It's a way of resolving your own problems. This is how it works. Column one bloke at party you write the person that's pissed you off person place or thing could be the american government could be anything could be a big thing or a small thing in this case it's bloke at party column one is um people place or thing that's bothered you in this case bloke at party column two because there you write the reason because he touched my face 
hate having my face touched, don't you? Who wants their face touched? Do you touch people's faces? No, is the answer, unless you know them. Touched my face. I'm furious, I'm getting angry now writing about it. The third column, we write down the seven areas of instinctual self that are likely affected if you're feeling pissed off about something. Pride, what I think other people think of me. Is my pride affected here? Of course it is, it's the number one thing affected. He thinks he can just do that to me. Ah, oh, kill, I kill, kill. Pride is affected. My self-esteem, what I think of myself. Yes, my self-esteem, oh, I'm the kind of person that people just touch your face. Personal relations, that's the script I give others when I go through life. I, in my personal relationships, unconsciously, I'm expecting people to behave in a certain way. And my, I contest, we all do that. We can, we, when we go into situations, we say something, we expect a certain response in return. Sometimes it's ordinary unconscious things. Hello, can I have the bill, please? Or sometimes when you come home from work, oh, I'm tired after a hard day's work, you expect the other person to say, oh, you work so hard, you work so hard. You're always teeing people up, giving them a script. Pride, self-esteem, Personal relations. Yes, my personal relations are affected because in the script I give this guy, he doesn't touch my face. Sexual relations. This this area is because sexuality is such a huge part of human behaviour in most cases. Um, but And it would only be relevant if I'd had to use some sort of sexually oriented or motivated action to cope with it. Like if I'd had to go and watch porn or sleep with somebody. This was not the case, so that's not affected. So I've crossed that out. Ambitions, my ambitions for myself. Yeah, I'm, my ambition is I'm never touched by anybody. That's my ambition, unless I consent to it or ask for it. Um, uh, ambitions, security is what I need to be okay. What I need to be okay is from things to be tight with my family, roof over my head, food in my belly, be able to earn a living. So this doesn't affect my security. And it's good to be reminded of the fact that most of the things that you worry about don't actually affect your life. It's just happening in your imagination, like this thing. Uh, finances, no, it doesn't affect my finances. So of the potential seven options, it's affecting my pride, my self-esteem, my personal relations, the script I give others, not affecting my sexual relations, is affecting my ambitions not to be touched and to be seen as the kind of man who would never get touched. Security, it's not affecting, finances are not affecting. Now in the fourth column, we ask ourselves a series of questions to work out where we are participating in our own misery. What mistakes am I making? I'm allowing my self-esteem to be affected by the actions of another person. Um, like, and I'm allowing my pride to be affected. Uh, I have a vision, an image of a man that I'm supposed to be. Where am I getting this image of a man from? Is it an organic thing or is it a cultural download? Increasingly, people think that our ideas around what a man or a woman are supposed to be like are culturally encoded. So why set up an idea of masculinity? Like, oh, I'm the sort of man I should be like John Wayne. I should be pulling out a revolver or delivering a right hook every time someone impedes upon me momentarily or minorly. Also, making a mountain out of a molehill. It's a minor thing. He apologised at the time. Making a mountain out of a molehill. So like these are some of the mistakes I'm making. Uh, allowing other people to affect my pride. Having a, an idea of what a man should be, i.e. myself. Um, and then berating myself for not living up to it. And then sort of making a mountain out of a molehill. The next thing you ask is where am I being selfish, self-seeking or dishonest? Um, am I being selfish? Well, I'm only thinking about myself. This is a pretty minor thing. Am I being dishonest? In a way I'm being dishonest because I do go through life daring the world to do something that's going to piss me off. You know what I mean? I'm like too heightened. I'm quite highly strung, do you know what I mean? So there's a sort of a degree of d dishonesty there. What I mean to say is something that I'm projecting on the outside world, in this case bloke at party, is really an issue that I've been dealing with for most of my life. So the bloke at the party is irrelevant. He's just a passing external stimulant that's not central to the problem of my beingness. This tool helped me to get to the core of my being and presents me with solutions, which I'll talk to you about in a minute. So there is a degree of dishonesty. Uh, what defects of character or faults are there? So it's like, this is just a way of further analysing it. Pride, yeah, self-pity, yeah, self-centeredness. These are all little areas, traits, attributes. They're in my book, they're on my website. You can find out about them in any 12-step group, but this is just a quick breakdown of them. Pride, self-pity, self-centeredness, selfishness, intolerance, impatience, greed, gluttony, sloth, lust, dishonesty, arrogance, envy, 
jealousy, self-righteousness, grandiosity. Now of those, I reckon my self-pity, my pride, my self-centeredness, my intolerance. Some people I know, like, even quite sort of macho famous people, I'm thinking of one person in particular, like uh, situations where you see like stuff exactly like this and it don't bother them because they're not operating on a level of worrying about every little thing. So like, I'm intolerant. I just let people be how they are, not make such a big deal out of stuff. Do you know what I mean? It's not so major. So self-pity, self-centeredness, intolerance, a little bit of grandiosity, a little bit of, self -right of uh, self-righteousness. I'm a very self-righteous person. A little bit of envy, because like envious of people that like John Wayne or Clint Eastwood, cowboys mostly, who wouldn't have that happen. And if they did happen, or it would be, you know, bullets would be flying. Mm. And arrogance, thinking like stuff like that shouldn't happen to me. So you see, there's like, I can change these things. I can, I can endeavour to not be that kind of person. And that will mean, wow, I'm different now. And I'll be free, free, free of these mad problems. All right, so once you've worked out the defects of character, you ask yourself, have you wronged anyone? No, because I didn't overreact. And, you, and then in tech, like I didn't do anything. I didn't spend the rest of it. I did think about it. I did think, I want to go over and do this, this. And then like some quieter voice in me went, this is not a major thing. You don't need to disrupt the force for this triviality. Always though, when there is a resentment, even if it's a minor thing, like someone cutting you up in traffic, some minor altercation, some little argument, some, some feeling like you're not appreciated at work, whenever you've got a resentment, there is a fear underneath it. And it's worth examining what that fear might be. So when I look at that, you know, at bloke at party because he touched my face, what are my fears? I'm not good enough. I'm not the right type of man. I'm not, you know, sort of strong enough. I can't take care of my family. I can't take care of myself. I'm going to end up alone and penniless, destitute in the streets. Now, like, obviously that sounds like a very dramatic thing, but what is going on when people, like, have some argument about, like, a football match and end, end up stabbing each other? Or when people get out of a car at traffic lights and it leads to a life-death situation? It's obviously because our trivial interactions are resourced from an emotional place that deals with our primal instincts and our unconscious mind. And if you are governed by your primal instincts and your unconscious mind, you will find yourself in situations that you don't want to be in by definition because the primal desires and the unconscious mind are not you, not the you that you believe yourself to be. Now, if we take this a little bit deeper spiritually, we don't want to be that person anyway. We want to be free of it, but we also don't want to be governed by the unconscious mind, nor do we want to be governed by primal desires. We want to be in attune with the deep intelligence at the core and heart of all nature. Now, the only way we're going to do that is by getting past the egoic mind and getting past the primal desires. So once I've acknowledged these fears, like, you know, it's an illusion that, you know, I'm not good enough. I can look after myself when I need to I'm a cool person I'm all right I don't need to be at an audition to be good enough every second of every day begging bowl in hand so once I've acknowledged these things I can this is what we do next I look at those patterns the set the patterns of belief the defects of character and and I become willing to have them removed and become and ask for them to be removed now that ask for them to be removed sounds a bit spiritual and indeed is a little bit spiritual because it's like I try to access a part of my consciousness that is not governed by my, the beliefs and prejudices that have previously dominated me. Is that possible for me to live without self-pity? What would that be like to live without self-pity? What will it be like to live without envy? Remember, envy is your own unlived potential projected onto another. Is it possible for me to live without live without that but instead just to pursue my potential of course it is so what I would so from here on in I I try to I ask to live free from self-pity I ask to live free from self-centeredness I watch my pride and my envy my self-righteousness and grandiosity and next time I find myself in a situation like that and I will find myself in a situation like that it is an opportunity for me to move into a higher state of being all of your life is an invitation to move into a higher state of being, a higher level of consciousness, because we can't live in the anguish, misery, and self-recrimination that comes about when you live in the egoic mind, where you're continually on the brink of getting involved in a conflict, even if that conflict is just with yourself. So here's how these techniques are deployed when dealing with resentment. Thank you. If you want to learn more about it, you can do that course, you can read that book, you can go on that website, 
or you can learn more about 12-step organizations for yourself, particularly if you've got a specific problem around addiction or alcohol or eating or relationships or codependency, look into that yourself. Thank you. If you want me to help me with one of your resentments, write it in the comments below. Also, like and subscribe. Thank you.